tonight on Reporting Scotland. Scotland could be the first part of the UK to ban smacking as the government backs legislation. I fully agree with it. I think it sends a clear message that people need to use you know, more effective methods to discipline children. I don't think they should ever ban, ban it because it's a it's like school ban belts by the... What is it like now? The kids go to schools. Also on the programme. The cost of running ferry services has doubled in a decade, but passenger numbers have barely risen. The aunt of Inaya Ahmed tells a court the toddler was killed by her mother. Northern Ireland football manager Michael O'Neill admits drink driving in Edinburgh. Good evening. Smacking is to be banned in Scotland. The Green MSP John Finney has put forward legislation aimed at giving children equal protection from assault in law. Today, the Scottish Government said they would ensure what ha that happens. Scotland could now become the first part of the UK to outlaw smacking. But those opposed to what they call state interference say they'll now step up a campaign against a ban. Here's our political correspondent, Andrew Kerr. Safe and sound in soft play. Protecting children is the top priority of parents and grandparents at this Partick play centre. The Scottish Government saying they'll ensure proposals to ban smacking become law. If you see a parent smacking a child, you're not going to be happy about it. Basically, you might even question them if it gets out of hand. But um, I don't think people want to smack their kids anyway. I think there's other ways and means of going about it. I fully agree with it. I think it sends a clear message that people need to use you know, more effective methods to discipline children. I don't think they should ever ban, ban it because it's, a, it's like school ban belts by the... What is it like now? The kids go to schools. The proposal for a ban had been put forward by a Green Party MSP. The Scottish Government had said they wouldn't oppose his proposals. Now they will ensure this becomes law, with officials already working to make that happen. Well, this is really good news. It's, it's not, not just good news from a legislative point of view, it's good news from a child protection and societal point of view. All the evidence shows that there, there are no benefits to be accrued from children being surrounded by violence or being the subject of violence. Indeed, only the Conservatives say they're still opposed, although they do say they will look at the final bill. No one from the Scottish Government was available for interview, but one SNP MSP explained why ministers want a change. We are one of six countries in the EU that still have legislation that allows smacking of children. The other 28 don't have legislation of, of 28 countries. So you have to ask yourself, in this day and age, is it a positive thing for us to say that you can't assault somebody in the street but you can smack a child? If this does become the law of the land in Scotland, it raises the question of how this could actually be policed. And campaigners are pointing out that decent law-abiding parents could be in danger of being criminalised. I'm not happy, Mister. The concern about so-called state interference comes as the government has already faced full-throated opposition to its controversial name person scheme. Those against the ban say they're stepping up their campaign. Actually, parents should decide how to bring up their own children, and I think it's part of a, a kind of wider concerning trend, this idea that, along with name person, that the state needs to actually protect children from their own parents, whereas I actually think the state should not be involved in parenting. Uh, parents should make the choices, unless it's a very, very extreme case of abuse or neglect, when obviously intervention is needed. Campaigns have also been kick-started in Wales, as the government there looks at a ban. But it's likely that Scotland will become the first part of the UK to put it on the statute book. And Andrew Kerr is here now. What's the timetable likely to be for this legislation, Andrew? Yes, Sally, it does just seem a little bit unclear at the moment. John Finney, whom you saw in the report there, he needs 18 signatures from three, 18 MSPs from three parties to sign the proposal for the bill before it can be introduced. So he'll speak to MSPs when Holyrood returns after the recess next week. Then it has to go through three parliamentary stages before it becomes law. But it's likely it will become law before Wales, so Scotland will be the first place in the UK to ban smacking, although the Scottish Government, of course, do point out that this is not a race. Yeah. And as we've heard, there is opposition to the ban. Are we expecting the campaign then to be stepped up, and if so, how? Yes, well, there's one campaign group, talking of Wales, who've been very active there, called Be Reasonable. They're upping their campaign here in Scotland now. They've released one survey, then their poll, they 
suggested that three quarters of parents are opposed to the state being involved in parenting. They claim it's a fresh assault on families after that controversial named person scheme I was speaking about in the report there. But of course, those who are in favour of the ban say the legislation will be there to set a role model in a way when it comes to child punishment. Andrew, thank you very much for that. The cost of running Scotland's ferry services has doubled in a decade, while the number of passengers has barely risen. The spending watchdog Audit Scotland has warned that a long-term government strategy is needed to ensure ferries deliver within budget. Here's our transport correspondent, David Henderson. They're a lifeline service for remote communities and a gateway to the Isles. Around Scotland, 32 ferry routes are funded by the Scottish Government, but they're seeing a dramatic change of use. In the last 10 years, the amount of public money being spent on Scotland's ferry services has more than doubled, while at the same time, the number of passengers has stayed almost exactly the same. One of the reasons is that lots of passengers are now choosing to take their car rather than just go on foot. Why? Well, it's cheaper. A government-funded scheme called RET, or Road Equivalent Tariff, cuts the cost of taking a car by ferry. It's popular with some, but not everyone. It's chaos, and the local transport can't get past. And yes, there is no preference to locals actually being able to get onto the ferry. I think the island benefits from it, you know, from day trippers, etc. It's a busy, busy island these days. It's got to help their economy as well, obviously. It's the same with many things, you know, rural bus services and so on, you know. You need subsidies in certain ways, otherwise people just don't have access to, to, to transport. When more people take their cars, more ships or bigger ships have to be used. That's helped drive up the amount of public money used to subsidise ferry operators by 104% in a decade. And bigger ferries need bigger terminals, another expense which has helped drive up Transport Scotland's capital spending by 174% in the decade. And next year, services to the Northern Isles will see these lower fares too, with an inevitable cost for the taxpayer. Little wonder Scotland's spending watchdog wants a national strategy put in place, so this can all be done within budget. In this day and age, the Transport Scotland need to be able to demonstrate that spending over £200 million on ferries is value for money because that is money that could be spent on other things. RET has been a phenomenal success for our islands. The boost in tourism, uh, that doesn't just uh, affect the ferry companies, of course, that has a great impact on the hospitality sector and hotels and restaurants and cafes. Today's report raises big questions. Is this the best way? to help people living in the islands to prosper? And is Scotland's ferry strategy on course? David Henderson, reporting Scotland, Larks. The aunt of a toddler who was allegedly murdered has told a court that the youngster was killed by her mother. A Liberal Democrat MSP has been told he has no case to answer after being reported to prosecutors over allegedly criminality connected to election expenses. Alex Cole Hamilton, who represents Edinburgh West, was accused by opponents of breaching the legal spending cap and filing an incorrect and illegal election return in the 2016 Holyrood campaign. He'd always denied any wrongdoing. This evening, Mr Cole Hamilton said he was glad the matter was now closed. The Barra teenager who was badly injured in the Manchester terror attack which killed her friend has returned to school. A 15-year-old girl who died after being hit by a car as she crossed the road in East Kilbride has been named as Megan Scott. The Northern Ireland manager Michael O'Neill has been banned from the road and fined after pleading guilty to drink driving. The Prime Minister has been spending the day in Brussels as efforts continue to end the deadlock over the Brexit negotiations. Our business and economy editor Douglas Fraser is there for us tonight. Douglas, what comes out of today's talks? Well, nobody expected a breakthrough from the summit here in Brussels, and so they're not very surprised that there's any breakthrough, uh, there's no breakthrough from the, the Brexit discussions. 
partly because they haven't actually taken place yet. This afternoon they've been talking about foreign affairs, security issues, the Brexit discussion. Well, it starts with Theresa May, the Prime Minister, will be talking to the other heads of government over dinner tonight with some brief comments. Uh, and she's going to put it to them that, that, that they can take stock of where they've got to so far, look ahead a bit, try to get a bit more momentum into what's happening. She's tried to put a bit of momentum into this by giving some ground on the issue of Britain being willing to pay its dues, but not saying how much the dues should be. And also a Facebook post last night aimed at three million EU nationals in Britain, trying to reassure them that to get settled status within the United Kingdom won't, won't be as delayed and bureaucratic as many of them fear, as some of them have experience of with British bureaucracy uh, anyway. So she's trying to inject this uh, momentum. There's still uh, a lot to do in the issue of EU nationals and their rights uh, in the UK, such as you know how easy or difficult will it be to get other family members brought across from other countries within the European Union into the UK, or will the migration rules be much tougher for them? It's also the issue, yes, of that bill and of the Irish border and how that can be uh, kept open while being the boundary between the UK and the European Union uh, market. What they're talking about on the EU side of the table, and they're likely to back a call for this from the President Donald Tusk tomorrow, is uh, preparing the ground for negotiations for the next stage after these three things get resolved. They hope at the December summit here in Brussels, preparing the ground for the transition which would take place after March 2019 and the future relationship, particularly on trade. Douglas, thank you very much. Research at a Scottish university has discovered a protein that can stop viruses developing. Scotland is to start exporting haggis to Canada for the first time in nearly 50 years. Firefighters have visited more than a thousand high-rise homes to offer reassurance and support following the Grenfell Tower tragedy. Fires in high-rise properties are at their lowest level in eight years, according to the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service. The first journey on the new electrified Scotrail route to, has taken place. The Class 385 train travelled between Edinburgh and Linlithgow yesterday. It's one of 70 being introduced to Scotland's busiest route from Edinburgh to Glasgow via Falkirk. The project has been hit by delays and rising costs. A launch date will be decided later after further testing. The Celtic manager says he won't be changing his team's attacking style of play. Well, they're considered one of the shyest wild animals in Britain. Now, a reminder of tonight's main news. Scotland could be the first part of the UK to ban smacking after the government confirmed it would support a member's bill. But those opposed to what they'd call state interference say they are now step up a campaign against the ban. And Theresa May is in Brussels tonight at an EU summit to assess the progress so far towards Brexit. But the German Chancellor Angela Merkel and other EU leaders are still insisting the UK make further moves before any discussion on a trade deal. And that's all from us for now. I'll be back with the headlines at 8 and the late bulletin just after the 10 o'clock news. Until then, from all of us here, have a very good evening.